September is my favorite month of the year. The weather is perfect, the ocean water is warm, the surf is pumping, and the garden is thriving. Garden tasks center around cleaning up the old garden and setting up the new one. This is the perfect time of the year for planting seeds for the fall, for giving your trees a haircut, and for improving that soil. September is a great month to seed all sorts of things. Some of the cool season crops you can seed right now or transplant include beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, collards, cabbage, chard, carrots, beans, peas, radishes, lettuce, and green onions. And you could seed some culinary herbs such as oregano, parsley, cilantro, thyme, and dill as well as some warm season crops that you could still seed right now that'll produce for you over the winter, such as peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, cucumbers, poha berries, bok choy, papaya, and pigeon peas. Now surely I missed something, but you know what always helps? If you comment down below and share with us what you're seeding right now in your garden so that we can all learn from each other. And if you're looking for seeds, it just so happens that I started up a little seed store of my own. Right now it's pretty small. We mostly just have a few fruit tree seeds for sale, but we're uh, looking for growers and expanding our selection so that we'll have all sorts of seeds available for you to purchase from the convenience of your own home and ship straight to your door. Be sure to check it out. It's at homesteadinhawaii.com slash country store. Now when it comes to what we're harvesting right now, the tropical abundance is still living up to its reputation. There's fruits such as tree tomatoes, palm oil, star fruit, lilikoi, abiu, ulu, mangosteen, avocado, papaya, dragon fruit, pineapple, meringue, petalai, banana, apples, pears, oranges, mangoes, sapotes, lemons, limes, cacao, cherimoya, loquat, durian, Chempadec, guava, pink wampi, rambutan, longan, and mountain apples. That's a lot of fruit that we got harvesting in the garden, but that's not it. We also have vegetables such as cucumbers, beets, tomatoes, lettuce, kale, corn, squash, green beans, eggplant, and peppers, as well as herbs such as lemongrass, Vietnamese cilantro, culantro, Mexican oregano, rosemary, ginger, turmeric, galangal, basil, kaffir lime, cilantro, dill, and mint. And we got nuts such as mac nuts, malabar chestnuts, and the java almond. Root crops include yacon, kalo, sweet potato, and cassava. We have perennial greens such as katuk, chaya, laupele, moringa, and more. As I mentioned last month, there's so much that I don't get to put into these videos. That's why I'm creating a month by month what to do in the Hawaiian Garden ebook to make it that much easier for you. Look for it to be released soon, December 2022, just in time to start off the new year in the garden. Oh my god, that was a ton to harvest this month. If you ever get tired of planting and harvesting, you still have a bunch of other odd jobs that you can do in the garden. Now, if you're thinking of planting trees, September is a great month to do it. Just make sure that you time it with the rains. The warm weather makes for great growth, but if you don't get any rain while the trees are trying to establish their roots, you're gonna have to do a lot of watering by hand. Continue building out your compost pile. Add kitchen scraps, manure, clippings from the garden, junk mail, whatever you can find that you can layer into your compost, put it in there. If you live in the rainy east side, all you have to do is just wait a few months and it'll be done. But if you live in a dry area, as you build your compost pile, make sure that you add plenty of water so that it can be really moist and break down. September is normally when I get back into pruning my trees big time. I typically leave a larger canopy during the summer to protect my fruit trees from the hot summer sun. But in the winter, it's time to open it all back up again and drop that material to the ground so that it could break down with the winter rains. Summer is normally pretty dry, so it's a good time to inspect your water tanks and perhaps give your solar panels a cleaning. I like to do this two times per year, once at the end of summer and again at the end of winter. And if you haven't kept up on your weeding, now's a good time to do so. By cutting it all back now as we progress into the slower growing months, you'll be able to see the effects of your work for a longer time before the weeds all grow back in. If you have a diverse garden, pests shouldn't really ever be much of a problem. But sometimes you do get an imbalance and you have to take action. I like to go around in the mornings with a hose and spray off any aphids, white flies, caterpillars, and other pests that I might see on my plants. 
And if the infestation is really bad, I'll spray those little buggers off with some soapy chili pepper water, which tends to cut down their numbers for a little longer than just plain water. I haven't noticed as much of an issue with the lace bug attacking the avocados this year. Maybe they finally found a way to live in harmony, but if you do start to see them becoming a problem, you could use some of the same strategies I just mentioned. Continue getting rid of any slugs or rats or fire ants. These pests are always around and something you got to do every month to control them. Now some people have been discovering a new pest in their garden. The Queensland Longhorn Beetle. This beetle tends to attack cacao, breadfruit, avocado, and more by having their larvae bore through the wood and killing them from the inside out. Not much is known yet in regards to control except that the adults are attracted to light which then you can pick off by hand and dispose of. We're getting into the best time of the year to propagate plants. Hardwood cuttings can be taken by the dozens and root out easily under an intermittent mist system. My favorite hardwood cuttings to take this month are katuk, moringa, chaya, laupele, rosemary, perennial basil. Now's also a great time to air layer fruit trees like lychee, longan, mangoes, breadfruit, mac nuts, and more. If you don't know how to air layer, be sure to check out this video on how I air layer the ulu tree. If you can air layer ulu, you can air layer anything. I also use this month to divide out plants such as bananas or lemongrass or even root crops such as yacon. And if you're into grafting trees, now's a great time to graft plants such as avocado and citrus, which you can learn about doing in this video when I visited my friend Anthony with Grow Paradise and he taught us how to graft avocados. Now when it comes to feeding your plants this month, September is actually a time when we start to kick it down a notch. This will be the last month that you fertilize citrus trees and avocados. I like to use a fertilizer from Down to Earth Organics which is specially blended specifically for these subtropical plants. I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to click on to get some of that of your own. But really my favorite way to fertilize my trees is by spraying either a compost tea or a fish emulsion with kelp meal mixed into it. Either of these methods are a great way to keep your plants well fed. Now one fertilizer I like to apply whenever I get the chance to do it is a fermented seawater to my coconuts. Whenever I've applied fermented seawater to my coconuts, I've noticed them just take off. And if you want to kick your coconut production into high gear and make your own fermented seawater, be sure to check out this video where I teach you exactly how to do it. Until next time, everybody, ahoy ho!